Welcome to the lecture series on digital signal processing. Before we start, I would like to give you the references for textbooks that I shall be following most of the <coughs> most of the time. Excuse me. Digital signal processing. A computer based approach by S. K. Mitra. This is TMH publication, it is available in the market, second edition I shall be following. Then discrete time signal processing. by Oppenheim and Schaeffer. This is PHI. Then digital signal processing, a practical approach Second edition this is Pearson Education Publication, Pearson Edu Education Asia. This is by Emmanuel C. Ifitcher. and Barry W. Jarvis. These are the three main textbooks that I shall be following. There are some more books which I which I shall give you for reference. You can follow that digital signal processing, they are all available in the library, system analysis, system analysis and design. This is Cambridge University Press. Paulo S. R. Diniz. Paulo S. R. Diniz, <coughs> Eduardo <coughs> A. B. Da Silva and Serigo <coughs> sorry Sergio Sergio L Neto. Then you can also follow the book by Proakis, it is a very common book available in the market and Manolakis, Eastern Economy Publication, it is available in the market. Then there are also books by Antonio Andreas, then uh, Johnson and Johnson, <coughs> there are many more in the market now. So, we shall concentrate mostly on the 
first two and occasionally on the third book. Okay, let us start with some elementary definitions about signals. All right. What do you mean by a signal? What is a signal? It is a variable, it is a variable that is dependent on some independent variable, it may be time or space, maybe it is a function of time or space or both. Okay. Now, for example, we have varieties of signals, it may be the speed of a motor, it may be the torque of a motor if it is varying with time or it may be flow of a liquid in a chemical process or it may be the intensity of light especially in images for example, where we deal with the intensity of light, the illumination level at different points of an image. Then it can be pressure, it can be current, voltage and so on. There can be so many varieties of signals that we deal with they are all converted into electrical signals through different transducers. Okay. Even the high voltage for example, when you measure high voltage you step down the voltage through PT or the high current you step down through CT and then rectify and you get a desired signal. So, signals can be anything like torque, speed, intensity. Now, intensity can be of light, intensity of vibration, mechanical vibration. I will just show you some typical signals. Uh, then pressure, current, voltage and so on. These are all converted to electrical signals through transducers. Now, we use these signals, we use these signals for a communication between a man and a man or man with machine or machine to machine. Man to man signal communication need not be need not be always a recordable signal. It can be even through eyes you make certain gestures or maybe movement of your hands all right. When people are not able to speak they used to make gestures and communicate. So, man to man communication those signals not necessarily all the signals will be very easily recordable through a transducer. All right. You can record the image, but when you make gestures, facial gestures, all right, and then recording that, you know, you change your eyebrows or your eyeballs and you communicate, that is also possible. Well, we will take the normal signals, the normal signals that will be very easily available through a transducer in the form of an electrical signal. Speech is one such signal where we communicate. Okay. So, I will show you some typical signals. Say, this is an English sentence Bishop moves to King Knight 5. This is the signal. Okay. Now, the signal is changing very fast with respect to time. So, unless you blow it up, unless you expand this, you would not be able to make out anything from the signal. Now, only some parts of this very signal we are showing here. For example, this is bishop that s part, all right. This is the type of signal that you get. Then 
before bishop uh, bishop the word ends up so you see a uh, this is p then moves if it is m it is like this mm. so you can see how long it takes though when you hear the signal is spoken in a fraction of a second but if you take the record and expand it it's like this similarly you can have the vibration of a machine a vibration of a machine for example we conducted uh, an induction machine all right this is single phasing when you have single phasing of an induction machine the there is there will be some noise there is, there is some kind of a vibration it is not uniform motion so this is the type of signal that you get in a vibration and the, these are the different frequencies that will be present in a signal then if you have an unbalanced machine on the rotor shaft all right unbalancing in the rotor shaft then this is the kind of vibration that you get see this vibration pattern and this vibration pattern these are different all right so you can make out from the vibration pattern if you can record it properly whether there is a single phasing or there is a uh, i mean the type of abnormality you can analyze from different vibration signals then loosely bolted base induction machine the bolt has been loosened and we we find the signal is of a different type and so on you can record similarly many other signals this was just an example man to machine communication you give a <coughs> command maybe through a computer or sometimes even a oral command that can be translated like the speech signal that i have given you so you can give an oral signal that can be converted to a command and machine can be switched on off or any uh, uh, executive order can be given machine to machine communication also we give signals maybe through a computer okay for example in satellite communication everything is through computer human inter intervention is there at times whenever there is an emergency situation otherwise it is all computerized so you are giving signal to the satellite when it is uh, launched okay so every time there is a machine to machine communication so with this much of brief idea about signals let us see what are the different types of signals that we come across or that we deal with in systems if we define xt as a signal in the time domain say this is a signal xt this is a continuous domain signal that is it is a continuous function of the variable t if i discretize it that is if i measure the value of the function at regular intervals of time then the same function will be observing only at discrete times so these are the values recorded so this will be n t only at multiples of t t is the sampling time only at multiples of t will be having the values now mind you with these recorded values you have nothing in between it is not defined okay it can be treated as a continuous signal it can be treated as a continuous signal like this it is an impulse of this kind and then it is zero then again at impulse an impulse like this again zero then again at 2 t it is an impulse and so on it could have been treated as a continuous function where it is a delta function then it is zero then it is delta function again of some magnitude so these are scaled delta functions i hope uh, you know what a delta function is you have studied in signals and systems uh, signals and networks so 
it can be treated as that also that is in these intervals it can be treated as 0, but it is not really 0 it is not defined. Somebody may interpolate between these two values and assume some values in between that is also possible. Okay. We will discuss these later on when we come to filters. Now, if we discretize only in the time domain this is a discrete time signal. Okay. Now, how much is this value? If you are recording it, if you are recording it through a digital device, then there is a limitation that has to be somewhere we have to stop for uh, for recording the value. Okay. You can have a 16 bit or a 32 bit memory, you can uh, cannot have an infinite memory space and hence this has to be truncated somewhere. If the value is say 5.625 units, say so many vo uh, voltage or maybe any other unit. Now, if I have just one decimal place of storage capacity, then it has to be recorded only as 5.6. <coughs> so, there will be a truncation, these two will be truncated or it may be rounded off. It may be five, say 5.675 if there is a truncation it will be 5.6 if it is rounding off then it will be 5.7 okay but i will not allow you to go beyond one decimal place of accuracy then there will be only certain discrete steps so this is at intervals of 0.1 so i can have either 5.6 or 5.7 or 5.5 but nothing in between so the values of the signal therefore in such a case will appear like this maybe at this point it is here at this point it is here so these are the levels so even though the signal was continuous and we were measuring these values at regular intervals of time, but we are we have the recorded values only up to these levels. There is nothing in between, it will not fall here or there. So, like this, I have just taken arbitrarily these values, it may be like this, and so on. Okay. So, these are digitized these are discrete in the time domain and also in the magnitude domain so this is known as a digital signal that is you have discretization both in the independent variable and dependent variable now we can have another type of signal an extension of this till the next reading comes we will treat the value of the function to remain constant at this point. Okay. Then when the new value comes here then this is again assumed to remain constant up to this point then this value has come. So, it will remain constant like this. So, these amplitudes were recorded and there the value of the signal is assumed to remain constant up to this. So, this becomes a continuous time signal earlier we are assuming this to be either 0 or just not defined or interpolating. Okay. Now, this is a continuous time function, but at definite levels okay. it is a box car signal. that is the sampled values are put on a hold circuit. So, with a hold circuit you get an output like this sample and hold all right. So, this is quite often this is the signal that we use in our normal signal processing all right, because whenever we sample a signal 
there is a duration for which the sample is allowed to remain constant that rather the, the, the uh, sampling is done over a certain period okay, and the value of the function is remaining constant at that point. So, it is this type of signal that we <coughs> use. Again, when you represent a signal, say if it is only time dependent, we write as x t. If it is in the discrete domain, so this is the analog signal which we are sampling only at regular intervals of time. So, this is the value of this, this very function x t or x a t to distinguish it from the discrete function we are writing x analog, x a n t is basically the signal that we are getting we shall be writing as x n t or to be more precise x n because it is an array of data, it is just a sequence of data. So, whether you are sampling after 1 second or after 1 minute or after 1 hour it is immaterial, it is the total data set of data points that we shall be handling for processing. Okay. Sampling time is not changing, so long as it is not changing, it is a set of data that we are interested in. So, we do not specify the sampling time all the time, we write x n and this x when it is discretized in the magnitude domain that is the digital signal. We can also have the variable in space, okay. we can write s all right, in space. So, x in space mean suppose you create a an artificially you create an explosion here, then there are signals going say underground explosion, then the signals will be transmitted in all possible directions. All right. So, it will have x, y, z three different directions and also with time it is changing. So, what kind of variable it will be? It will be dependent on four such uh, if I call that signal as um, rather s signal as s then it is a function of x, y, z and t. Okay. So, in all your geophysical, geophysical seismic studies for example, you get this kind of signal all right. Tsunami you know you have seen uh, any of the websites okay. the pictures that have been taken all right. So, you can see uh, the studies are made geophysical studies are made with x, y, z and t all these four variables. Again in say uh, color TV you are having signals with red components all right red green and blue components so signal s will have r g and b three components and all of them red component is again a function of suppose the point here is illuminated with certain amount of intensity of light of that red component basically these are called pixels each pixel is consisting of three elements red green blue all right and each component will have different levels of intensity that's how you get a color image of different uh, shades now that will be dependent on each element will be dependent on x y z x and y if because it's a two dimensional picture so x and y so, S r will be a function of x y. In a TV every time see when I am moving my hand, so the picture frame is changing. So, it is also dependent on time, how this particular point's intensity is changing. If I move my hand, uh, say my fingertip is changing its position. All right. So, every point will have also this variable. Similarly, x y t x y t. So, it is basically a vector r g b vector and each element of the vector is dependent on 
x, y and t. Okay. Now, in signal processing, we have useful information, we call it signal or signals, it can be a multi channel signal also. Then it gets mixed with noise which is not wanted, unwanted noise and what you are getting this is the received signal that is corrupted, noise corrupted signal you are receiving. All right. Now, our main aim is to get hold of the useful information all right, by some kind of a processing. Now, the signal processing is basically consisting of noise removal ex exercise. Since the noise, noise and the knowledge about noise is not known, you may have just a statistical information about noise. So, the total removal of the noise is also not possible, all right. Noise can be uh, uh, random, uh, it can be a random phenomenon. So, apart from this noise removal, we also try to enhance certain features of the signal, all right. Enhancement of some features we would like to see say for example in the high frequency zone of a signal what is the um, component all right what is the component distribution that means what are the different high frequency components beyond a certain level or what are the low frequency components we want to suppress the low frequency part the signal may contain for example, my voice as it is the normal voice even without noise theoretically suppose no noise is present then as you are hearing you want to see what will be the high frequency component of my voice all right, or the low frequency component of my voice then you want to segregate you want to suppress certain, comp uh, certain components and enhance certain parts or even in an image sometimes we try to enhance the image the quality of the image we try to see which is soothing to the eyes all right so that can be also an exercise and then separation we would like to see if it is possible to separate separate the high frequency components from the low frequency components segregate the two okay for example in uh, musical signals we want to differentiate between say different instruments the voice of the singer and so on we would like to filter out as far as possible certain particular instruments so certain band of frequencies are to be suppressed how it uh, i mean how soothing the sound will be to the ear you may like certain instruments particular instruments to be enhanced Now, there are different fields of application anything that you can think of in modern day technological society will have application of DSP. You cannot imagine anything without DSP the application of DSP. So, you can have acoustics, vibration as I was 
showing you speech, data communication, sonar, radar, then seismology, we use for oil exploration, earthquake, okay. then biomedical, it is known to all of you, it is uh, widely applied in biomedical systems. EEG, ECG, then there are many other applications where we take biomedical signals and use this, the techniques of DSP, robotics, instrumentation, as I was telling you flow measurement, pressure measurement and so on instrumentation and control, image processing, satellite, it may be satellite weather mapping it may be any image enhancement, sharpening and so on, uh, animation and so on. Then consumer electronics, now in consumer electronics, Nowadays, everything is based on DSP, all your synthesizers, <coughs> then you know you have music mixer, what are the advantages of DSP? It's for fast processing, fast processing of data, you can use a very fast computer, you can have parallel processing architecture, which is not possible in an analog signal. So, for fast processing, Nowadays, you have very fast computers with a very good memory size and parallel processing architecture all used effectively, you can reduce the time of conversion and even control decisions. Then the most important and uh, advantage is exact reproduction repeatability. That means, under say at different times, at different points of time, you conduct the experiment, you will get the same result, all right. They are time tested and there is no aging effect. The data is stored, it is a mathematical data one is retained as one, all right. whereas with any physical component, with any analog system, there can be always chances of noise creeping in okay. and the system will not be behaving identically, there will be effect of aging, temperature and so on on the components. So, that is the repeatability is good, then you have easy parameter adjustment,
you can always change the parameter say a particular constant is changed from 2 to 3 all right you can again do the experiment you can try to see how the signal behaves or how it is processed in no time you can keep on playing with any of the parameters with an analog device changing the parameter is not so easy all the time so parameter adjustment is very it's a flexible system it's very easy then guaranteed accuracy it is determined by the number of bits okay then lastly small size and cost small size and reduced cost low cost so the network space required is also with the advancement in vlsi design the dsp chips which should be available in the market are so small in size that they can be used in all uh, gadgets very effectively. The disadvantages are not much people are working on it to reduce this the design time. Speed and cost for large bandwidth signal. and finite word length because of the finite word length errors keep on accumulating so you have to be careful about that now let us come to some of the standard signals we shall be referring to the sampling time as capital T we shall be dealing with time varying signals we are not going to discuss about space varying signal but the treatment is identical ok. One by T will be the sampling frequency. When we say we are sampling at uh, at the rate of one kilohertz, that means the sampling time is one by thousandth of a second, point zero zero one second. One of the most important signal is an impulse. In the analog domain, an impulse is defined, it is written as delta t, it is defined as a function whose, say it is a function whose value is from minus infinity to plus infinity if you take is 1 the function exists only at t equal to 0 and before and after this it is all 0. So, at this point the function the value of the function is infinity, but the integral is finite when it is 1 it is a unit impulse. In the discrete domain, in the discrete domain, it is a little simplified. We write this as delta n in the discrete domain, and the value of the function delta n, when we say delta n, that means 
the value of the function is of unit strength there is always a sampling time associated okay uh, with the sorry uh, with the sampling time there is always a duration for sampling it is not zero there is a small duration finite duration and hence the impact can be very easily quantified suppose this time we define as some t on then it is the magnitude sampled value multiplied by t on sampled value suppose this is x sampled multiplied by t on that will be finite when that value is 1 i call it delta n okay it is as good as defining in terms of this integral okay but there is no assumption like dt tending to 0 ft tending to infinity and the integral is unity so that is not required because you will always have some duration of the signal so t on if that is fixed then this is also fixed so henceforth we shall be writing delta n we will be defining this function as 0 when n is not equal to 0 and equal to 1 when n is equal to 0 that is at t equal to 0 corresponding to that in the discrete domain it will be n equal to 0 at n is equal to 0 it is having an impact of unit magnitude and rest of the time it is all 0 it is just non existent. So, symbolically it will look like this delta n it is denoted as 1 0 0 0 0 and so on. We shall be showing uh, unit impulse or unit sample sequence this is unit sample or unit impulse okay then we define unit step un as equal to 1 very similar to unit step in the continuous domain that is before n is equal to 0 the function is 0 after n is equal to 0 including n is equal to 0 it is of magnitude 1. this is just the sampled version of a unit step in the continuous domain. So, unit step in the discrete domain is defined like this. Okay. Once again let us come back to unit sample. If we consider a delay that is if this is started after one interval then it will look like this. 0 0 0 and 1 again 0 0 0 and so on if it is delayed by one step and this delayed function will be delta n minus 1 okay so in general delta n minus capital n will be a function like this 0 0 0 0 and so on after capital n interval it is of magnitude 1 again 0 0 and so on 
okay. This is the magnitude of the function, excuse me. So, if there is a delay by n steps, we shall denote like this, the function appears after nth interval. Okay. So, a unit step, a unit step which is written like this can be conceived as a summation of this delta plus this delta n minus 1 plus this is delta n minus 2 and so on. So, u n is nothing but delta n plus delta n minus 1 plus delta n minus 2 and so on up to infinity. I can write this as sigma delta n minus k k starting from 0 to infinity. Okay. This is precisely you get in case of a continuous function where u t is nothing but integral of delta t in the positive region of time is not. If you integrate an impulse, unit impulse, you get a unit step in the continuous domain. Exactly similar, similarly here summated this operation, summated functions, delta functions will give you unit step in the discrete domain. Conversely, if you differentiate, if you differentiate a unit step in the continuous domain, you get a delta function. All right. So, if you take a differencing operation, just opposite of an aggregate or summation, if you take a differencing operation on a unit step, you get a delta function. So, u n similarly a delay by n step will look like a 0, 1, 2, 3 up after n and so on. This is unit step shifted by n steps. All right. This is u n minus n. So, what will be u n minus 1? It will be starting from interval 1, this is 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1, and so on. Okay. So, if I take u n minus u n minus 1, what do I get? It will be a delta function. Is that all right? I have just subtracted from this a function like this. So, this point onward will be all getting cancelled. So, at this point only this will remain. So, I get a delta function. Okay. Then we define a periodic sequence. Very similar to our continuous domain functions, x n, if it is equal to x n some plus k n, where k is an integer 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. That means, if the value of the function is repeated after every capital N intervals, then it is a periodic function. So, in the discrete domain, we define the periodic sequence as the one which obeys this relationship and capital N is the period. 
Okay. Now we define an exponential sequence. Excuse me. Suppose in the continuous domain you have x t is equal to a into a to the power alpha t and we are taking sampled values of t that is t is equal to n t. Therefore, x n is nothing but a into a to the power alpha into n t we can write this as a into e to the power alpha into t. Since alpha and t both are constant, I can take this as a constant c. c to the power n, some constant to the power n. What is it? It is a GP series. No? So, you get value of the function. If c is less than 1, it will look like this starting with a magnitude a, it will be a into c, a into c squared okay, and so on. It will gradually diminish. If c is greater than 1, this is for c less than 1. If c is greater than 1, it will keep on increasing a into c, a c squared and so on, it will keep on increasing. Okay. When is c greater than 1? When is this greater than 1? When alpha t is positive. When alpha t, t is negative, that is e to the power minus 3, say, then it will be diminishing. Okay. So, an exponential sequence will be given like this. If c is negative, we have talked about the value of c greater than or less than 1. If it is negative, then a into say c is minus 2. So, it will be a into minus 2, a into minus 2 squared. So, alternately it will be minus and plus. So, what will it will look like it will be a, it may be exponentially going up or coming down, but it is alternately positive and negative. It may be gradually diminishing or it may be increasing. Okay. That we will see later on. Yes, there is a question whether c can be negative or not. All right. We will see under what situation we get C negative. All right. okay, I think we should stop here for today. We will continue with this in the next class. Thank you very much.